Hello and welcome to another Impact Lounge as part of V2 Wrestling exclusive interview. Uh, today we are going to be joined by Moose very shortly. But before we get on to that, if this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, please do make sure you hit uh, the subscribe button and give us a like or, or leave us some comments below. Uh, we do these interviews from time to time. So if there's anyone you'd like us to try and get hold of, let us know in the comments section. But please do make sure you hit that subscribe button and a like or dislike if you don't like what we say. Uh, so in a moment, I'm going to be joined by Moose, but uh, make sure you check out the channel for any other content that might be of interest, including our reviews of Impact each and every week. OK, now over to Moose. So welcome back. Uh, and as I said, now I am joined by Moose. Moose, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. So how's today been? Because I believe you've been in London all day doing a, a series of media interviews. Yeah, just um, working hard here, doing some of these interviews. Got in like around 10:45, 11 a.m. this morning, and um, had like hours to myself and then headed down here to knock these interviews out. And uh, can I, as I said, I, I realise it's coming towards the end of the day for you, so I wanted to keep it a bit of fun. So let's have a bit of fun at the expense of uh, our other interviewers today. What, what's been the stupidest question you've been asked today? Can you can you think of one off the top of your head? Uh, <laughs> are you putting me on the spot, man? <laughs> uh, actually, they've all been good questions, man. Oh. Can't think of one. They've all been good. Okay, well, let's see if we can break that trend. So if someone else asks you later on, you can say it was my one. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. so you're over in the UK at the moment, uh, and obviously Impact is uh, doing quite a bit of uh, press coverage over here at the moment. Are you going to be wrestling at the Manchester event in a couple of weeks? Um... If, the, if you're talking about the one in September, then I believe so. But um, I don't know if there's one in a couple of weeks here. Well, yeah. At least I have been. Yeah, well, you're been quite right. It, it? You're quite right. It is September. That's, that's my calendar going off, off the charts there. So anyway, um, yeah. let's uh, dive into to things that have been going on. And, and obviously, I'm, I'm going to start off very quickly with, with, with your career. Uh, before you got into wrestling, obviously, uh, an NFL player, a star. Um, so... When did you kind of come to the realization that you were going to give up American football and uh, move into wrestling? Was it something you'd always planned to do, or was it something that happened by chance? No, wrestling was always something I wanted to do since I was like ten years old, uh, and I and I watched it for the first time. I knew I wanted to be a wrestler, but I didn't make the decision to actually become a wrestler until I was in two thousand twelve um, when I was with the Rams. Until the end of that year, I was like, man. I feel like I need to um, hang the shoes up soon and pursue this wrestling career. And um, that's exactly what I did. And did you talk to any wrestlers before you made that move? Or was it, did you just turn up one day at someone's wrestling school and say, well, let's go for it? Um, the, I didn't even talk to any wrestlers. I, I had a chance to play with the same thing as James Laurinaitis' nephew. Um and he was the our linebacker in the Rams. And I saw him, and he knew about my passion for professional wrestler, for, for, for professional wrestler. So he actually kind of helped out, helped out with it. Excellent. And obviously, uh, one of your well former colleagues. Uh, I, I don't know if you ever played against him, but you teamed with D'Angelo Williams at uh, Slammiversary last year, which I was at. Believe it or not, I know I'm talking to you in the UK today, but I was at I was in Orlando at the time. So, do you keep in contact with him, and did you try and talk him into staying? Yeah, I talked to D'Angelo all the time, um, and um, I mean, I definitely did talk to him into staying. But one thing I would say about him, um, I think he was he will wrestle again. With Impact Wrestling, we just got to find the right spot and time for him to make it second to have a second match. Yeah, so uh, have you been in touch since, or have you tried to whet his appetite to come back, or is he just done now? Is that him? Yeah, I, I, talk, I talk to him all the time. I mean, he's a good, real good friend of mine, so yeah. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, moving on, looking at your career, as I said, that was at uh, Slammiversary last year, and it was one of the better matches. He, he obviously took to it very well, but, but you yourself, uh, you were voted. Rookie of the Year in 2015 by uh, PWI, so that must have been so, some achievement. But you, you've won quite a lot of belts and impact. You, you've won the Grand Championship. What's been your, your greatest kind of, uh, the, the thing that you're proudest of the most so far, achievement in wrestling? Um, probably would be winning the Grand Championship. 
Um, that's really the biggest, the, the most major card, it's the biggest major card I've won since becoming a wrestler, so I'll definitely go with that. And, um, I mean, I, I try to go that 2018, uh, when we become world champion, so, uh, I'm gonna keep working towards that goal. Obviously, you're the, the longest reigning and, and the one who's won the champ, the grand championship the most. Do you think that if you do yeah. get the, the world championship, that will be something that you value more, look back on as, as more? Yeah, um, and, and that's the plan. I mean, um, not only do I want to win the, the world champion, but I want to be the longest reigning world champion. So that's, what, um, that's a big goal of mine, and we'll see. I have to actually get the, the world championship for the first time to accomplish goal number two. Well, we're going to go back to some of your other matches and title reigns and those kind of things in a little while. But just as we've been talking about the Grand Championship, uh, obviously it's on Austin Aries at the moment. Um, what do you think of, of the actual belt itself? Because I know they've got rid of the rules that were about when you won it. Do, do you think it's something that they should keep or do you think they should try and transition it into something else? Um, honestly, um, for whatever um, management say they want to do, um, I trust those guys. I trust every decision those guys make. So if they decide they want to get rid of it, I I trust their standpoint, and I, I believe in whatever they decide they want to do with it. Fair enough. And um, talking of, of management, obviously they've come in now for a few sets of tapings, and one of the first changes that they made uh, was to kind of end one of your storylines very quickly, uh, America's Top Team, that angle, which... I've got to say, was was one of my personal favorites last year. Do you want to tell us a bit more about that time uh, during that? You know, was it quite fun to record? Do you wish it would have gone on for a bit longer? Well, what, what's your memories of it? Uh, it was definitely fun. Um, I got to work with Bobby, who has moved on and done great things. And um, we had great chemistry in there. And um, got to work with Dan Lambert, and he's... Uh, I, mean, I, I feel like that's the show that everybody has uh, much of a knowledge he has for, for wrestling. Um, yeah. with, with regard to Dan Lambert, uh, obviously you filmed a lot of stuff with him, but do you, did you get to know the guy off screen as well? Is, it, is that something that you think that he could come back in some capacity in the future? Yeah, I definitely think that he could come back and um, work with yeah, Impact full time. I mean, he he did such a great job as a character um, once he was there that um, I, I think he could, he could definitely come back and we could use us hmm. if he ever decides to come back or if Impact decides to bring him back. And just with regards to, to, to the angle, do you think that it had a bit more mileage in it before it ended? Uh, I mean, would you have liked to have had a programme with KM who was just coming into it at that time or, or do you think it had run its course at that point? I think it ran its course. I, mean, I, I think they ended it when... Um, they they sort of fit and it, and, uh, I think it, it was great. Excellent. All right. Well, just um, looking forward then with the current program. Obviously, uh, it looks like you're going to be getting into it with um, Congo Kong. Um, but how far away do you think you are from the the, the world title picture? Because uh, my co-host on our review show each week, he thinks you're going to be ready for Slammiversary. I think you're most probably going to be challenging at Bound for Glory. Uh, have you got any predictions or, or any insight yourself that you can tell us about? Um, I have some insiders, but I don't want to spoil it, so you guys will stay tuned. So, so it has already been discussed and you've got a long-term plan in place and you know where you're going and those kind of things already? Uh, I'll just say stay tuned. Um, Slammiversary is... July 22nd. Yeah, so, um, and with regards to this new creative team, uh, obviously the last one you were served very, very well and, uh, you know, we already talked about America's top team angle, but uh, how has creative changed in the two years or is it two years now I think you've been with, with Impact? How has it changed over that time with the different regimes? Has there been any highs or lows or, or anything that you've enjoyed particularly? I mean, it's been different. Um, Definitely some highs in there, and definitely some lows in there. But like I said prior, um, in the past, that I learned that Scott Demore is running the show and Don and Sandra because um, now, and I hate to say the cliche, cliche terms about making Impact great again, but that's exactly what the guys are doing. Okay, and 
as part of um, when uh, Jeff took over, there was there was a lot of you know launching of the network, having all these partnerships and all these kind of things, which has continued. And you're obviously heavily featured in Japan and, and other places around the world. What's been your favorite destination outside of America to to wrestle? Um, definitely Europe um, uh, would be number one, and Japan is definitely number one. Yeah. And can you see a, a partnership coming up in Europe? Because at the moment they are very much either Japan or, or Americas, aren't they? Is there anything that you're aware of that you can let us in on? Yeah, I think they're trying to figure that out right now. So hopefully so we'll, we'll have an answer to that question. Great. All right. So um, I just want to, to move back to some of the people you faced. Obviously, when you won the Grand Championship, you faced Aaron Rex. And uh, he was short-lived within Impact. Uh, and we've already talked about uh, Dan Lambert. And Lashley, you've mentioned as well, who, who's also left. If you could bring back any of your previous opponents to, to restart a program or, or just to see them back around the locker room, who, who would you like to bring back? Um, oh, that's a good one. Maybe Cody. Cody Rhodes. All right, OK. And uh, are you friends with him outside the ring? Um, I'm friends with him in, in, inside, I mean, outside the ring, but uh, I think since he left the world, he is, and he's been doing great um, with stuff in New Japan and also with the Ring of Honor. And he's a guy that I would love, love to bring back in London. You've obviously just brought up Ring of Honor there, um, and obviously Austin Aries is, is working with them. Uh, I don't know if that's already been filmed or not, or whether it's coming up. But is, is that a partnership that you can ever see happening uh, with Impact, or do you think they're, they're two different companies that will never kind of work together long term? I mean, it's 2018, and we see change every single day. We see stuff that we 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 all say that there's no way that would have happened back in the day. So, um, if that answers your questions, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I mean, I would love the relationship with us. So you still I do think it's gonna. I think it, I think it's gonna happen someday. Well, that, that's reassuring to hear. Well, that's great. Um, all right. So, so moving forward, then obviously we got the the tapings that have just happened, and we've already talked about your your uh, feud that's coming up with Congo Kong. What what can we expect to see from this, and and what do you make of working with uh, Congo? Because we've interviewed him on the show, and he's he's a really nice guy outside of, of the ring. So, what, what's he like to work with? Um, time goes on for man. Another big athletic guy that's on our roster. And I can't wait to we lock on to big athletic guys hitting each other hard. Absolutely. Well, um, I'm just, uh, you, you said that you've been a fan since you were 10 years old. Um, so what kind of drew you into wrestling? And uh, who was your favorite all time wrestler? Um, my favorite, my top two favorite all time is Ric Flair and Razor Ramon. Ah. And I, and, um, uh, I was going to say they, they weren't in. Guys. Sorry, I was going to say they, they they'd already left by the time you came in. Is that right, or were, were either of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually got a chance to share the ring with Scott Hall once at a BCW show in Canada, but he was managing. So yeah, absolutely. So so you, you obviously went for the uh, the charismatic uh, heel characters and. And although you debuted yeah. as a heel, is that something that we can expect to see at any point uh, from yourself? Because you've been pretty much a, a, a face character all the way through your, your run so far. Um, we'll see. I mean, I, 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 I like being the character I am now, but you never know. I mean, that's up to Scott and Don and Sandra to make that decision. Sure. So you mentioned about Ric Flair, and have you ever talked to or met him? or or? Even have you ever got Jay Lethal to do an impression of him for you? Yeah, Jay's a good friend of mine, so yeah, we we talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about that quite a bit. And there's another guy I hope comes and makes makes this transition to uh, Impact Wrestling. Uh, you, uh, is that is that something that you can tell me that is likely to happen, or is that uh, just a wishful thinking on your part? That's wishful thinking. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, uh, you you obviously uh, mentioned there Jay Lethal and, and Ring of Honor again. Um, so has he ever pulled a, a rib on you, pretending to be Ric Flair on the phone? No. No, no. All right. And, and with regards to the locker room then, uh, you know, obviously we, we hear when we read all these stories backstage that there's uh, usually um, uh, a wrestler's court or whatever it's called in, in the back. 
in impact is there that kind of hierarchy as well where there is someone who's seen as the uh the peacemaker or the the, the one that everyone listens to um I, I would say Trevor Lee, but I don't, I wouldn't consider him the peacemaker. He's more of their judge <laughs> or the sheriff, we call him. So, <laughs> right, right. So, uh, has there been any stories that you can share, or is it uh, what goes on behind the curtain stays behind the curtain? No, I, I can't share that right now. <laughs> Fair enough. So, uh, just finally, just before we finish up, then. Um, so, we've obviously talked about the people that you've admired growing up. Uh, we've also talked about some of the people you'd like to see back in the ring. It, in the locker room, who are the guys that you would say that you're the closest to in there and you'd consider your best friends? Uh, probably Eddie, Eddie Edwards and Trevor Lee and DJ Z. All right. All right. And of course, you tower above all of those. Is that why you're friends with them? Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, <laughs> so anyway, well, we're looking forward to seeing you in Manchester in September, as we said. Uh, I'm sure you've got a couple more interviews to do today. Uh, just before we leave, though, is, is there anything else that you want to kind of tell us about uh, that's going to be happening f for you in uh, an impact ring shortly? Is there anything to look forward to that we can uh, set our DVRs for? No, that's it. That's it. All right. Well, Moose, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, Welcome to come back on the show anytime. I know it's been a long day for you and hopefully uh, we'll get you back on soon, but uh, we really appreciate your time today. Thanks a lot, Moose. All right, thanks, sir. All right. Well, that was Moose there. Uh, as you can see, it was quite a short interview today, but uh, I'm guessing he's been doing the, the rounds with all the media and uh, I'm sure it can be tiring, but hopefully you enjoyed the show and do make sure that you hit the subscribe channel to the Impact Lounge and uh, also check out us on Facebook, which is once again, the Impact Lounge and the Impact Wrestling Fan Zone. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure you tune in and hit that subscribe button and give us a like or dislike and leave some comments. Hope to catch you soon. This is Adam for the Impact Lounge. <laughs>